pray with me. Shout, Heavenly Father. Come on, shout, Heavenly Father. Cause me to be mighty in words and mighty in deeds. Come on, say it like you are at a Nigerian all night prayer. Heavenly Father, cause me to be mighty in words and to be mighty in deeds. My subject this evening is power words, power deeds. Power words, power deeds. Chapter number 7 of the book of Acts, verse 22. This is Stephen in his uh, proficient defense addressing his accusers, the doctors of the law. He is a deacon, serving tables, highly intellectual, powerful in faith, powerful in signs and wonders. And in his uh, case, the liturgical process of his case, he gets to Moses and says this of the great Moses. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. He was mighty in words and in deeds. Uh, I'm late, but generally in the faith movement. In fact, uh, when the faith movement under, led by, uh, you know, Caps and Kenya and Daddy Hagen and so on, we only became acquainted with those individuals and uh, confession and so on very 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 late in our ministry years close into after 20 years that I'd been preaching and so for me it took a while to catch up because confessing as we are taught to do holding fast the confession of your faith you know and saying confessions on a daily basis was frowned upon where we came from until some very responsible leaders who packaged the message well, began to show us the advantage and the value of the way we make confession. Uh, and, and so our prayers then were framed a little differently. And so we came into a world where uh, there were already criticisms about blab it and grab it, confess it and possess it. Nevertheless, we began to work with uh, the, the sense of uh, Proverbs 18, 20, death and life are in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. A man is snared by the lips of their words and began to frame our conduct and behavior and our prayer style around the act of confession. Uh, and, and that has helped us along the way. Uh, power words then are not just limited or confined to our prayers or the quality of our prayers or a Christian belief. Quality words affect every area of our lives. The more quality the words, the more powerful the words, the more powerful a person's experience. The difference between a faculty of a university that's starting here based on another that has a longer journey is generally the quality of words. The quality and the repertoire of words of a proficient lawyer versus somebody not so. It has to do with the quality of those words and the way those words are administered or dispensed within a specific range of need. Those words then tend to determine the deeds that follow. Uh, I got a video clip of an old friend from my school years. Uh, it was quite funny. Uh, his language, verbiage, and so on, and jargons, colloquials, are still what they were in 1974. And the low quality of his words uh, have determined the low quality of their life. And so the minimum entry for many things is you have to present the quality of your words to have access to certain worlds. And I think with uh, African uh, people, in terms as we grow in, in entrepreneurship and in business, 
and in formulating and establishing institutions. Even as our churches progress and move, we have to advance in the quality of our words because the quality of the word determines the quality of the people. Faith comes by, hearing comes by, and so if we are going to be uh, just throwing words out for verb its sake and word's sake, there's no guarantee we are going to be producing a quality people. Our job then is to improve and to bring a quality people. So Jesus then, he comes as the expression of the word. In fact, his heavenly name, according to uh, the epistle of John, is that there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. So it appears that Jesus' heavenly name is the Word. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. The same in the beginning was with God. When Jesus came into the earth, his earthly name is Yeshua or Joshua. Jehovah has become our salvation. And so the sum total of who Jesus was and is, is the Word. So faith comes by, hearing comes by. So if faith comes by hearing and hearing comes with the Word, that's Jesus. Faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by, faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by Jesus. And so we, we increase in the Word to be transformed into His image and His likeness. So the more of the word we get in is the more of like Jesus we become. The object is to become more Christ-like, to become more conformable into the way he patterned and lived his life. So consuming the word is important. But just confessing the word for confessing sake doesn't guarantee you access. There has to be confession of the mouth and belief in one's heart. And so a lot of times, like I said probably last night, uh, for me, the most powerful messages I've ever preached in my life is I've rehearsed the word and, and excuse me, practiced that word. But I spend time allowing that word to get into my spirit so that I can actually believe what I'm preaching to the congregants. Because somehow, I mean, if you saw the passion of the man in the previous section, uh, not referring to notes, because the word is just that nigh him in his mouth. The word now is in his spirit. It's rooted and it is established there. And so our responsibility is not just to preach a word to change people. The word must have quality, but it must be in your spirit. Spirit, because out of the abundance of your heart come the issues of life and the mouth speaks of that and so we have to then not have, just have quality words in our mouth they have to be in our head and in our spirit once those are produced you are guaranteed quality deeds if you are mighty in words you will eventually become mighty in deeds it takes a while, but it is inevitable. Moses is probably the most significant. How without a weapon, without money, without any tools, without a credible, uh, reliable backing of an underground system, mobilized a force and liberated people from one of the most austere or administrations holding slaves in history and did it in a short space of time. He was mighty in word and was mighty in deed. His approach to Pharaoh was highly intellectual, highly planned out, highly skilled, and it took years to get him to that place. Pray with me, shout, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Come on, shout, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Cause me to be mighty in words and mighty in deeds come on say it like you are at a nigerian all night prayer heavenly father, heavenly father cause me to be mighty in words and to be mighty in deeds 
We appeal to those that uh, are in negotiations, whether it's in government, in the private sector, in dealing with deals with foreign countries coming in. We have to have, we have, to have negotiators that are mighty in words that have a repertoire of words that when they put them down, they're not selling us down the line or kicking the can, but can resolve issues because mighty in words is going to be mighty in deeds. Shout, I am mighty in words <coughs> and I am mighty in deeds. Now, generally, sisters and brothers, the usage of words and the application of words determines the quality of the law firm or your medical practice, or your university, or the congregants that sit in your churches. And so our pursuance then is to pursue quality words to produce quality deeds. There's a young man that was presenting at a conference I did over the weekend. He has invented uh, a, a fuel fos free, fossil free fuel engine. It's a V8. And it looks good. What was limited there, I wasn't being cynical or anything like that. I immediately made my, my body language extremely neutral to show my interest in what he was doing. Uh, but he was limited in words. And so there were things that he was not interrogating, questions he was not answering, a budget he was not addressing. It was like in the pizza pan world of hypotheticals because it was good desire, but lacked in words. And so he was lacking in words. It was small words and a small deed. So we introduced him to somebody who is high up in intellectual property in Africa and asked him a few questions. And so when Mr. Saki, who is over intellectual property and protecting Africans intellectual property throughout Africa, asked him a few basic words. To him was just domestic words, just words they use every day. To this youngster, these were big words that he was not aware of. So I pulled him to the side. I said, you lack in words, that's why your product locks, lacks in a deed. You are going to need to be helped. Shout after me, say, I am mighty in words and deeds. Oh, I'm going somewhere, I'm going somewhere. Paul said in Romans, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. That's the word of faith which we preach. So we have to preach it. There's an entry level. We preach it from this level. Our intention is to go to the next level. We must not and should not remain on the same level. We have 366 days next year to work from. We should be measuring if we have improved in words. And if we have increased in deeds. And, and so it's essential that we do that. The guarantee of our lives is the things that we put down and in place. Paul said this, if he's the writer of Hebrews, he says uh, for in verse 12, For when the time comes that you ought to be teachers, you have need that somebody teach you again. Teach you again. And the reason for that, you have lost your desire for deep words for the deep oracles of god and the reason for that you have become dull of hearing take your baby finger say don't be dull of hearing <laughs> say don't be dull of hearing uh, uh just an example amen just an example uh i i tease sometimes i say this is the ear that uh, doesn't work so well uh, it's the one I give Chi Chi. It doesn't work so well. So when she talks to me, I can't hear what she's saying. But, but some of the reason for that is everybody speaks in a key. My, my key that I speak in is generally in the key of C sharp. And so when I preach and I have a musician playing behind me, they can pick me up in E sharp and then I'll start doing the hoop sing thing all the way up. And so you, you keep on hearing your wife is saying, did you do this? Have you done this? And you, you can hear, but you're not listening because you become dull of hearing. You are accustomed to the key. And so uh, the message today was profound. This is just an example. Bishop Akwankwa could have been teaching tithing here in the church. And you guys are just, ah, it's big daddy. It's big daddy. It's big daddy. 
is Big Daddy. So you, you hear him every Sunday. And then Dr. Ottibel comes in and says stuff. And then people will meet Big Daddy outside and say, Oh, Big Daddy, Big Daddy, oh, what a word, what a word. Like, really? But I was just saying that last week, the reason for it, he's speaking in the key of A sharp. Dr. Edward came in the key of B sharp. <laughs> I hope I'm not speaking in the key of B flat. <laughs> and so a guest speaker can come in and say exactly what you have been saying in your village out there in Bielsa State, and they'll think, wow, 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 wow. But the thing is that we, we, we become dull of hearing. And when we dull of hearing, our senses are not exercised. And so we, our works are not being performed. Isn't it amazing that you have a child at home? You know, they don't want to wash dishes and so on and so forth. And then they're going to spend the weekend at, at your friend's house. Then your friend calls you and says, Ha! Ah, a junior is, a junior is a, such a good boy. He's washing dishes. Uh, he's cleaning and fixing. And you're wondering, are we talking about the same person? Because at home, they hear your voice, clean your room, wash the dishes, take out the garbage, dull of hearing. Put your baby finger in your essay, you will not be dull of hearing. Come and shout it with passion. Oh yes, oh yes. And so now we must develop a repertoire of good words. I'm, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Amen, amen. Uh, the fact that Jesus said, you will say to this mountain, and you will have whatsoever you say, that whatsoever is governed by rules. I can't say whatsoever I want and it will be given to me. And when he says, when you pray, whatever you pray for you will get, there are rules. I cannot confess that I'm taking that woman from that man because there is a rule that prevents me from confessing everything. Uh, one of my friends, I won't mention you, is stepping out in the shoe world in quite a dramatic way. Amen. I love the shoes, but I cannot be desiring his shoes. I can't confess, those are my shoes. I confess, those are my shoes. I can't confess, I'm taking this screen and I'm putting it in my carry-on luggage and I'm taking it to my country. Amen. Because this screen is protected by the laws of covetousness. And so when he's saying then... Uh, whatsoever you have to understand the rules in which that is said whatsoever is not a cut blanche license it is in the confines of God's will and desire for your life and so sometimes we start saying things they are obvious things like somebody else's wife or somebody else's car but there are other rules or regulations concerning certain things that you may not know of and it appears that God is denying you or God is limiting you to something. It could be limited to laws that you are not aware of. But an advancing in mighty in words will eventually educate you as to why certain things are fine and why certain things are, are not. Paul said, I prayed three times to remove this thing here. And God said, my grace is better for you than this condition. Shout, I am mighty in words and in deeds. Yes, it's Proverbs 18 and verse 7. A man's mouth is his destruction. His lips are a snare to his soul. 20, we'll be satisfied by the words of our mouth and the increase the increase increase so words must constantly be increasing not in terms of uh, many but in terms of quality in terms of quality sunday morning our doctors had an initiative there's many doctors in the church and so they provided free services uh, for breast cancer and so on my appointment was at seven there were several of us at a seven o'clock appointment and the young doctor was using terminologies examining me I was not aware of. And there's a little boy that we're sponsoring. I'd noticed about three weeks ago, he's got spots on his, all over his body. Uh, and we were concerned. So the doctor came and spoke to me and uh, gave me a list of things that was wrong with the boy, the medications the boy needs and so on. 
uh, I was just saying yes, 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 because it was Latin and Greek. I couldn't understand it. You know, he could have been saying to me, you're such a troop. I was saying yes, 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 yes. Uh, he understood. I didn't understand. The little boy surely didn't understand. The little armor bearer carrying the boy didn't understand. The doctor understood. And then he wrote a little car prescription. It looked like a drawing. <laughs> I just uh, a drawing. And then they took the prescription to another crazy person called a pharmacist. He saw that. He said, oh, we need this drug and that drug. I said, well, how did you figure that out? Are you on a drug that you can figure that out? <laughs> and so then the words then translate into mighty in deeds. So let's deep that's words quickly. We have to, like James said, tame the tongue. You have to discipline your tongue not to speak small things. Zimbabwe is in a mess. We have a challenge, but we have encouraged our church. We are not going to be speaking and fueling the situation there. We are going to be speaking, not denying reality, uh, not de making like those things, not being ostrichic. That's an ostrich with its head in the sand. Not being ostrichic to deny those things are there. But if we are going to speak, we are going to speak quality words to begin to produce quality deeds. Are we together? And so, like James said, our tongue must be controlled. Point at your tongue, say, control yourself. Hezekiah Walker wrote a song. He said, uh, uh, I'll pray for you, you pray for me. We are a part of God's family. Amen. I won't hurt you with words from my mouth. Amen. Point at your tongue again, say, control yourself. If you don't know about a situation, if you don't have the information, just control yourself. Keep it closed because an individual's life could be destroyed from lack of knowledge. Now, let's go to deeds. Let's go to deeds. Deeds. Jo John 3, verse 21. This is Jesus concluding his midnight visit with Nick. He meets with Nick in the middle of the night. And, and we generally stop reading the conversation with Nicodemus around about verse 7, 8, 9. But John 3, 16 is a part of the conversation with Nicodemus. Now, in conclusion, he says to Nicodemus, but he that does truth comes to light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. So truth then comes to light, deeds become manifest. The more truth comes to light, the more deeds begin to manifest. Uh, truth comes to light, one and one is two. That's truth coming to light. You then advance in maths. Uh, you join sentences and commas in English. De deeds come, uh, uh, truth comes to light, manifestation comes after that. We start on a low premise of ministry. God always starts something small and grows big. Amen. We start with milk. You get one tooth. Amen. And you learn how to brush it. And then you are entitled to eat meat. Truth comes to light. Deeds follow. Truth first. Deeds follow. And so truth sometimes can take a long time. Say deeds are coming. James 1 22 be ye doers of the word not just hearers only so confession is good but manifestation is better I'll show you my 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 words through my deeds faith without works is dead so I'll manifest my works I'm gonna say it I'm gonna do it I'm gonna say it I'm gonna do it Words and action are important. This is true for a government leader that promises something. Don't just throw out words. Go there and do it. You say it, you do it. You promise a girl till death do us part. You say it, you do it. You promise a church you're going to deliver goods. You say it, you do it. Amen. You say you're going to run a good company and you're going to tr trust uh, you, people can trust you in that company. You say it, you do it. Shout, I'm mighty in deeds. 
I go to Oma every year and the hotel I stay is uh, opposite the Berkshire deal office of Warren Buffett. And Buffy took responsibility for a situation that happened in a bank many years ago to build the access of trust. Because he said, I'm not just going to say it, I'm going to demonstrate it in deeds. Now, let's talk about power words and power results as I close. Jesus was mighty in words. He starts late in ministry, but he starts. He speaks and then he heals. He speaks and then he heals. He's mighty in words. He's mighty in deeds. Say, I'm mighty in words and I'm mighty in deeds. He said, I'm going to die. A grain of wheat will fall to the ground, but that grain of wheat will come out. He understood that for this cause I've come into the world to save sinners. The pathway is death. And even in his conversation, we don't have any knowledge of the conversation itself, meeting with Moses and Elijah. It was concerning his death and his resurrection. It's now time to lay down your life. I've said it, I'm going to do it. And he said it and he did it. After his death and resurrection, it was proved he was mighty in words and mighty in deeds. Amen. Uh, we as individuals can walk that same path. Moses, the great man, was mighty in words, but he was also mighty in deeds. The words he said, he backed it up with miracles. He backed it up with signs and wonders. He backed it up with going through the Red Sea. He backed it up with striking and bringing water out of a rock. He backed it up by turning the water into sweet. He backed it up by bringing bread in the day uh, 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 and meat in the evening because God was with him. If you look at a Joshua, he was mighty in words, but he backed it up with deeds. When he stepped into the Jordan River, the Jordan had to roll back because you have to be mighty in words and in deeds. Joshua was mighty in words and in deeds when he came out of the promised land with a sample of grapes, pomegranates and figs and said we are able to go up at once and take the land. Caleb said we ready right now. 40 years later the boys were still strong. Their word was still the same. They were still mighty in word. They would not die in the wilderness. They would not perish with the prognosticators and the haters and the doubters and those people that refused to believe God. They were mighty in words and in deeds. And Caleb says, I'm stronger now than I was years ago. I'll take this mountain single-handedly. I pray that God would give you a grace to make you mighty in deeds. That you rise up and go to the enemy's camp and take but what belongs to you. Give someone a high five. Say three more coming. Oh yes, three more coming. I want Jericho to know I've been talking for 40 years, but in 40 days, you're mine. Amen. Rahab, you've been saying for all these years your words, but the words are going to be proven by a mighty deed. Someone shout amen. amen. Gideon, you're hiding away. You are just a humble man. The angel says, I'm looking for somebody that can deliver Israel. And Gideon suddenly becomes an Italian. Are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? And the angel says, we're looking for you. He says, no, uh, we are the least in Israel. You qualify. Uh, our family is the least in Manasseh. You qualify. Uh, our family, my family in the family is the least. You qualify. And so God then begins to speak to Gideon. And Gideon was mighty in words. Because when he called, 32,000 men came. And then he said, if you are afraid, go home. 22,000 went. He remained with, uh, with 10,000. When he said to them at the water, we have too many. His words were mighty. 300 remained. Those 300 didn't question his words. No sword, no spear, no shield. Just a fire, trumpet, and a pitcher. They believed his words. And later, God proved to Gideon through a stranger's dream in the middle of the night that a small barley loaf, as small as it may seem, is going to break down all the tents of the enemy because Gideon, you are mighty in words, but your deeds are going to be even mightier. 
I don't care how humble your beginnings are. I don't even care where you really come from. I don't even care if you can't spell the town you're living in. Amen. God's about to take your words and make your deeds mighty. Shout, my words are mighty. Shout, my deeds are mighty. Clap your hands 12 times. Now give God a praise. You're just coming from a little village and and you are just a humble praise and worship leader. And so they call you to sing for the king because he's gone penga. All these demons and tokolochis jumping in his head. And so David sings and removes the devil in Saul's house. But then in chapter 17 when David comes and he sees the Philistine. The first thing David is mighty in words. He looks at that war machine and says, How dare you attack our living God? I'm going to feed your flesh to the bones. The Philistine's retort was, You just a boy. Do you think I'm a dog? The answer is absolutely yes. I'm going to put you in your place. So David was not just mighty in words. He became mighty in deeds. And when he leaves that place, Deed after deed after deed after deed. I declare 2020, your words that have been mighty are going to manifest in deeds. Shout deeds after deeds. Say deeds after deeds. Say deeds after deeds. Tell a neighbor, say great deeds are coming in your life in 2020. It's going to happen in my life. I believe it's so in my life. No weapon formed against me is going to prosper. Shout, I'm mighty in words. And I'm mighty in deeds. Shout, I'm mighty in words. And I'm mighty in deeds. Ruth, you said, whether thou goest, I will go. Where you go, I will go. Your people are my people. I will sleep where you eat. Those are mighty words. But girl, you're moving from a handful to marrying Boaz. Because God is taking your mighty words and putting a mighty deed. And you're giving birth to Obed. Obed's giving birth to Jesse. And here comes Jesus. Mighty words are followed by mighty deeds. You don't even know what you carry. But get ready for mighty deeds. Clap your hands if you have to. (laughs) Clap your hands five times. Give God some praise. In a simple prayer, as a young king, Solomon says to God in the dream, I don't want money. I don't want the life of my enemy. I'm asking you for an understanding art and for wisdom. And God said those words are so mighty. I'm going to give you all the things you didn't ask. First test is dealing with two girls that had a baby. And Solomon became known for his deeds. Look at the things he did. The wisdom he expounded. Look at the things he built. Sheba came from Zimbabwe. (laughs) To come and see Solomon with Zimbabwean gold. Amen. Because when you move from mighty in words, which is not enough. Thank God that you're a great preacher. But being a great preacher is good for you. But next year, deeds are following. I said deeds are following. Deeds are following. Deeds, deeds, deeds. The company's office are the words you express for your company. The deeds office is to register what you actually own. You will own the company's office. You will register at the deeds office. Clap your hands if you have to. This valley of dry bones, those are my words, will resurrect, the bones are coming up. 2020 is a bone resurrecting year for so many, so many, so many. Now I'm closing with this. Samaria is in a famine. They start eating all kinds of rubbish. They even start eating a donkey's head. Then somebody cooks a child and eats it and the king tears his clothes. And and wonders why the nation has deteriorated so bad. Outside the city, there are four men that are lepers sitting there. One of them was mighty in words. He said, if we sit here, we shall die. 
our bodies are broken we stink badly we don't have any food with nowhere to go mighty in words let's go to the enemy's camp perhaps they'll feed us there when God saw the mighty words God said I've got to add a mighty deed on these words Africa here we come we might have been poor and sick and laid back like lepers but we're telling the enemy we're coming we're coming we're coming we're coming mighty in words now mighty in deeds we're taking the enemy's camp give someone a high five shout take it take it take it take it take it take it your words have laid the groundwork the deeds are following take it 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 give god a praise take it 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 mighty in words mighty in deeds mighty in words mighty in deeds silver and gold have i none mighty words but such as i have give i thee mighty deeds i declare mighty words and mighty deeds on our lives here give god a praise as we pray